A Zoom killer is on AppSumo. If you schedule online meetings with your clients, coworkers, or prospects, you gotta check out Vectera. Stay tuned. So the feature of Vectera that really takes the cake for me is the ability to create a meeting room for each client or project that you're working on. Then everything you do in that room just stays there, like having a dedicated conference room for each client. That's fancy. Now in this video, I'll show you all of the features of Vectera, so stay tuned to the end, and then let me know what you think about Vectera. What did they get right and what did they get wrong? The AppSumo deal is fairly straightforward. 69 bucks gets you lifetime access and two gigabytes of storage for your meeting rooms. You're gonna wanna use that storage for things like uploading files or making recordings of the meetings. Now we'll get to that in more detail later. If you add a second code, you'll be able to create your own custom domain name, a C name, and you'll also get a second host so up to two people can run meetings concurrently. Have a bigger team? Well, you can stack up to five codes total, giving you an additional two hosts per code. It's important to know that each host gets their own two gigabytes of storage, but the storage isn't pooled together across your entire team. That is a confusing decision that Vectera's own website seems to contradict what AppSumo's terms say. Getting started is easy. First, connect your calendar. Now, Vectera supports Apple, Google, and Microsoft's calendar platforms, so chances are you won't have trouble integrating with what you're already using. Connecting to my Google Calendar was simple, and it only took a few clicks. Now, next, what you're gonna wanna do is create an appointment type. From the main dashboard, just click on the Create Appointment Type button and give the appointment type a name and a brief description. You'll be able to change the public link for your meeting and even disable the appointment from showing up on your booking page completely. You can choose between an online meeting or an offline meeting. And if you choose an offline meeting, I like that you have the option to set a location for the meeting, like your office, for example. Next, you can specify how long the meeting will last and even give yourself some buffer time before and after the meeting so you're not rushing from one call to the next. You can also add additional questions to the registration form to make sure you get the important details you might want from your client or prospect ahead of time. In this case, I just asked for their URL to try out the feature. Before you publish your new appointment type, you'll need to set your availability for that appointment. This process was a little bit clunky in my opinion as you have to use their drag to make available interface. And the times are shown in military time with no option to change to a standard AM PM setup. I'd personally like to see an option to type in the availability with a number pad. Finally, you're ready to share your link with anyone you want to schedule an appointment with. After clicking the link, your prospect is taken to a booking page that explains the appointment and clearly displays the description, length of the appointment, and where the meeting is to take place. It's important to call out that this page is mobile responsive and looks good on desktop as well as mobile. For this appointment type, I set the location to either be online or offline. So in the next screen, the prospect is given the choice of where they would like to meet. Finally, it's time to choose a day and time for the appointment. Now, I'm not a very big fan of the design on this booking page, and once again, I really wish the times were given in a standard AM PM format, especially when it's for clients. After scheduling the appointment, the prospect is taken to the booking form where they'll enter their name, email address, as well as any additional questions that you've configured. This form is fine, but it's oddly positioned on the page, and it, there's no padding at the bottom. It just feels a little rushed UI-wise. Once the appointment is booked, they'll be taken to a confirmation page with the details of their appointment, but there is no link to add it to their calendar. It's a glaring oversight in my opinion. A series of emails is triggered by the new appointment. One to give your client the appointment details, another that is a calendar invite, and a third that is sent to you to notify you of the new appointment. Now, I think the two client emails could easily be consolidated into a single email, but the emails did hit my inbox without any issue, and the language used inside of the emails was clear and professional. Before your first big meeting, you're gonna wanna check out the audio and video configurations, and there is an option to do that right from the sidebar. You can choose your input devices and easily verify that your microphone and camera are both working correctly. Hey, this is a test. I'm checking out the microphone. Does it work? And while this is a feature that you'll find on virtually all appointment software, I do appreciate that it is so easy to access without being inside of an appointment. So you can make sure you're set up and ready to go ahead of time. The software does boast white label features, but right now that seems to be limited to adding your own logo and what they call a greet image. It doesn't appear that there's any way to add your own brand colors. So 
So that might mean that your logo completely clashes with the platform's own colors, as happened to us with our client amp logo. Now let's set up that killer feature and create a meeting room that we can share with clients for weekly or monthly check-ins. From the dashboard, give the meeting room a name, and you can choose if that room should be locked. Now that means that people will need your permission to come in. If the room is left unlocked, anyone with a link can join. After you hit create, the room will pop open so you can have a look around. Next, you're presented with the option to test audio and video in case you didn't do it ahead of time. Then you'll hit join the conversation to begin your meeting. Vectera pops open a window and asks for your permission to send a notification, along with a really confusing series of arrows that seem to disappear before I could get through them all. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see options to get the link to invite more people to the meeting. You'll also see a settings tab where you can configure audio and video inputs, as well as change the settings for the meeting room itself. When you enable presenter mode, guests won't be able to add content or edit the content that you have already shared. You can also turn on what's called private notes, which allows you to click this little eye icon in the lower left hand corner to make any notes that you're taking for yourself private. In our testing on live client calls, the connection has been quite stable, but we left the quality selector at normal. If you want higher quality and you know everyone in the meeting has a great internet connection, you could easily bump it up to high or HD. Next to the private notes icon, there is easy access to the chat box, so you can share links or drop text to each other. A nice touch. Using other platforms, I'm often searching for the chat box, but I found this be a nice, clear UI, easy to find. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that each AppSumo code comes with two gigabytes of storage per host. So how do you use that storage? Well, one of the most popular ways is definitely through recordings. Creating a recording isn't automatic like the previous AppSumo deal that I'm familiar with that's uh, similar in a feature set called 24 Sessions. Instead, you're gonna need to download and install the Vectera browser extension and manually begin the recording process. Now, this system has its pros and cons. If you're the type of person that always remembers to hit record, you'll probably find it easier to manage your two gigabytes of storage this way. But if you're more like me, you'll probably appreciate an auto record function and that doesn't exist right now. It is worth noting that you can store recordings locally and in that case, you're not gonna be limited to the two gigabytes of cloud storage provided. Each meeting room has some really slick and handy features built in, like the ability to use a whiteboard and share files, share your screen, or even co-browse. The whiteboard works okay, but writing with my mouse makes me look like I never finished kindergarten. Now, you can of course also type, which certainly comes in handy, and there is a marker functionality, which by default is set up to look like a highlighter. I think that is a smart application there. There are shape tools so you can highlight things, and there are also ways to change the color of the shapes tool. The eraser tool works nicely, and it removes large chunks of text all in one go. I was able to easily connect my iPad to the same meeting room and use my Apple Pencil to write on the whiteboard. My experience is that it is certainly better than using your mouse, but it is far more laggy than a native Apple Pencil integration that I'm accustomed to. So it didn't really improve my handwriting all that much because the lag was still noticeably distracting. Now, however, artistic types or those that love to annotate and encircle things are certainly going to love the capability to use an Apple Pencil with their meetings. After you've sufficiently marked up a whiteboard, it is easy to click the right arrow and start working on a fresh page while still preserving your existing work. If you want to move the whiteboard out of the way, just hit the minimize button. Uploading a file for collaboration couldn't be easier. You can connect Dropbox, Google Drive, or just upload a file from your PC. The uploaded file pops open in a new window with the same tools you've already seen in the whiteboard section. So you're free to mark up your file and make it abundantly clear what's important and what needs to be revised. Screen sharing allows you to share your entire screen, a browser tab, or as I prefer, an app window. You'll be able to select the app you want to share from a list of currently open windows, and then everyone in the meeting will be able to see the tool. There is a fairly handy anti-infinity screen feature that I've never seen on another tool, so I was pleasantly surprised to see that Vectera was smart enough to solve a basic problem that almost everyone who's ever used a webinar software has encountered. Finally, there is the co-browsing feature that allows you to select an open tab and share it in the meeting room. Doing this will allow you to review a website together and even take a screenshot of a site so you can easily mark it up with whiteboard tools later on. This is some pretty thoughtful tech and I can definitely see how this would be ridiculously helpful for reviewing websites with design clients.
At this point, you might be wondering how many people can connect to a meeting at the same time. Well, according to Dieter at Vectera, Vectera works with secure P2P streaming. There's no limit on the number of guests on the other side, but Vectera is mainly built for small meeting groups and one-on-one -on -one client interactions for training, advisory, sales, support, or coaching. Say six people for simultaneous cold browsing, video, et cetera, should be fine, depending on the bandwidth and PC performance. So is this an Instabuy? Yeah, well, kinda. For anyone who actually schedules meetings online anyway. That's not to say it's a perfect deal. I don't like that there's no way to customize the booking screen to not say video call. I'm currently using 24 sessions and the use of the word video call confuses some people into thinking they have to actually be on camera. Now, sometimes you just wanna take a call in your PJs with messy hair, I get it. So let me change the verbiage on the booking page. There's also no way to set up holidays or unavailable days from within the app. You'd need to mark them as unavailable on your main calendar, like over on Google Calendar, and then let that sync into Vectera. It's not a big deal and it's probably something you're likely to do anyway, but I'd love to have the ability to do that inside of the app. The lack of AMPM really gets me. It's one thing if I have to deal with it on the back end, but making my clients deal with it is pretty annoying. This should be an easy thing for them to fix, so I hope they can add that on quickly. So the bottom line, this is a really solid tool with a great feature set that's actually unique. Vectera gets a score of 9.3 out of 10. The only thing that I have to decide is how many codes I'm gonna buy. If this review has been helpful to you and you want to grab your very own copy of Vectera, help support the channel by using our link below in the description. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it allows us to create more reviews like this one. That's all for this video. Make sure you hit the like button if you like the video. Head on over to thatltd.life to join our community or leave your review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.